How's everybody doing today? Awesome. All right. I want to welcome our online church today. I want to say hello. Um, it's so great to see everyone here in the house as well. Um, I just want to remind you that we are a Pentecostal, multicultural, multi-generational church, a family of believers committed to finishing the Great Commission. So if you could today, go ahead and take out your phone. If you're watching online, hit that share button so that we can share the word today, so that we can get the message of Jesus out today. Um, if you are a first-time guest with us today, you can go to www.bcog.cc. And there's a connect card on there. We can fill out some information so we know a little bit about you. And, or if you're here today, you can also go out to the welcome desk. And there's cards out there, too. Um, and I just want to remind you that um, today as we give our offering, there's the barrel outside. Or you can also go online to the Give tab where there's also other options to do that. You can text, give by mail. Um, we know that everything's cashless right now, so we want to make sure whatever you need, um, we're available. So if you need help after service, you can see us out in the foyer. We'll help you get it figured out. But if you would stand with me today as we get ready to pray for today's service. Church, we serve an amazing God, don't we? That no matter what's going on in our lives, even no matter how crazy this world's going to get, we serve a God who is faithful. We, we get so worried about small things that we forget that he cares about the sparrow. That it doesn't matter where we're at, where we're, where we're going. He's already before us. He knows our situations. Today we are, we're a church that has many needs in our, in our church family. There's, there's people who are sick. And we need the power of God just to touch our church and our families. So if you would, please look at, look at those names. But if you would, if you just have a need today, would you raise your hand? I have one myself. But let's join together and pray today that God would just anoint our service, that he would be with us in our needs and our time of need. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day and for your many blessings, God. Lord, you are a God who provides. You're a God that's ever faithful, ever true, Father. And I just pray today, God, that, Lord, no matter what's going on in our lives today, Father, that we would just drop everything, God, in the service today, Lord, just to worship you, just to honor and magnify your name, God. Lord, we need this time. We need this time of just coming into the house of God, coming into this place, Lord, and just saying, Lord, we need you today, God. Lord, this world's crazy, Lord. This, there's plenty of people who are sick, Father, Lord, and we cannot do this life without you, Jesus. So today, God, I pray for every sick person. I pray for those who are struggling financially today, God. Lord, I pray for those who are having trouble making ends eat meat because, God, you are a God who provides. Lord, no matter what it is, Father, Lord, we can come to this house and worship because we don't have to be afraid. We don't have to live in fear, but we live to serve a God who is ever able, ever true. And, God, we just magnify your name today, God, because you are so holy, so good, Father. You're the good, good Father. And we just thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. We give you honor. And give him glory today. Church, in John 15, 15, he calls us no longer slaves, but he calls us friend. Today, church, he's a father. He's a friend. And he's ready to meet you today. Just lift your hands and worship his name today. Don't be afraid. Don't worry about who's looking. Church, if you're sitting on your couch at home, stand up. Lift your hands. Praise the Lord. If you're in your car driving, worship him. Today's the day of victory. Today's the day of praise. So lift your hands. Lift your voice and sing to the King of kings and the Lord of lords, our friend and our Father. Amen. We worship you, Jesus.
the all the love today, all the glory today. God, we just worship you in this place and in our homes, Lord. We just proclaim that you are great and you can do great things. And you're the God of turnaround, and there's nobody and nothing like you. God, we just worship you today. We pray that you be glorified in this place. God, you're so great.
we worship you. We worship you. We praise your name. God, we love you today. God, we thank you, Lord. You are our keeper. God, we thank you, Lord. You're our savior. You're our master. And there's just something about the name Jesus that brings comfort and peace to your people. We can just whisper that name when we are down and out and in despair and it changes things. Thank you for the name of Jesus. We proclaim that name Jesus is above every other name. There is nothing like it. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We just love you this morning. Just love on him in your own way. Just tell him that you love him. We just reverence that name. How we worship him. Jesus, Jesus, there's just something about that name. worship that name. Lord Jesus, we thank you and we praise you for that name that is above every name. The name of Jesus. There is no name like that name. It is the only name by which we can be saved. Lord, we just lift up that name. We declare that Jesus is Lord here in this house. You said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. And Lord, we lift up that most wonderful name, the name of Jesus in this house today. Lord, be glorified and magnified in this place, in our lives today. God, we just thank you. We praise you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One more time, would you give the Lord Jesus a hand clap of praise? Just praise him, for he is good. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. You can be seated for just a moment. I got just a couple things I want to share with you, and then we're going to get into the scripture. Uh, but I know sometimes that when I've got a few things to say, y'all get a little bit antsy.
and get ready to sit down. So uh, I'll let y'all sit down and give you these things, and I'm going to read my text, and then we'll uh, get into the Word this morning. First of all, so good to see you in the house of the Lord today. Just I know we're trying to social distance and you know, not hugging or shaking hands, but you can wave. So just look around the sanctuary today. Just wave at somebody. Tell them you are glad to say, mouth at them, you know, I'm glad to see you. So good to see you today. So glad to see you all. I want to say this. I want to say thank you. And thank you to everybody that has reached out, everybody that has been praying. Thank you for the encouragement. Uh, I know many of you have been continued to pray throughout this season. I want to say thank you to those that are, they've been in contact with us throughout this week and last week and have told us that thank you for not just disappearing on us, uh, but letting us know that, you know, because of age and health conditions, many that have said they're just not comfortable getting out right now. And so I certainly respect that. And we continue to pray for you. Thank you for that. Thank you for your continued generosity, church, in giving. You've been faithful. And uh, thank you so much for that. And I do want to say the second thing that I've got that I want to give you this morning before we get into the Word uh, is I want to bring to your attention a missionary, uh, Joel Barron and his wife and his three children are missionaries. Uh, I believe it's in Germany. It's the European Theological Seminary. They sold everything, packed up everything, and uh, they went over there a few years back this is normally the time that they're in the states now of course because of the coronavirus it's affected the amount of services that they've been able to have and raise money uh, they need about 36,000 a year which honestly that's that's not much and uh, they need about 36,000 a year they were already cut short on the services that they were able to hold because of the coronavirus. Now, uh, he posted just yesterday, I believe it was, that he has tested positive for the coronavirus. And so that has completely shut down their fundraising ability in person. They are Church of God missionaries. I shared on the church Facebook page this morning. You can click on the link. It'll take you to the Church of God World Missions page. You can securely give. I'm asking you to pray and ask the Lord to lead you to give. I told the first service this morning, I have all my ministry. I have tried my best not to ever just get up and just beat people over the head and make you feel like I'm always asking for money. But what I am asking you to do today is I'm asking you to pray about how you can help these missionaries that because of coronavirus, they've not been able to get out and raise the money uh, to be able to do the work of the Lord. They teach music there at the European Theological Seminary. So not only are you investing in them, you're investing in everyone that they are training to go out and do the work of the kingdom. So, uh, and, and it doesn't matter how much or how little you give. I said this morning, I have been surprised at the responses that I get. People I have no idea are watching. There have been people watching our services in other states, other countries that I would have never thought they're watching. In some way, somehow, word gets back to me. And so there, I don't know who's watching this morning, but there may be somebody that could give the entire 36,000, no problem. But you know, I, you know me, I'm also not, I can't get into that when somebody says, oh, you know, that thousand dollar seed will break the devil's back. Let me just tell you, for a lot of us, a thousand dollar seed wouldn't just break the devil's back, it'd break our back and we wouldn't be able to buy no groceries. So I'm not saying that, but you know what I am saying is God requires giving out of what you've got. He looked at that little widow woman. He didn't expect her to give the most amount, but she gave that one little mite out of what she had, and Jesus said she just gave the most. So don't use the excuse, oh, I can't give. You can give something. Everybody can give something. If you want to give through the church, you're more than welcome. Just make sure that you mark that as giving to Joel Barron. The easiest way to do it, again, is through Church of God World Missions. And I'll let you know this also. The good thing about that is whatever you give to that specific project, in this case the Barrons, 100% of that goes to them. Because of our structure, uh, the tithe of tithe helps pay 
the administrative cost. So 100% of what you give through Church of God World Missions to that specific uh, project, which in this case is the Barons, they get 100% of that. So I want to encourage you to be in prayer about giving to help them. Uh, I would love to see uh, in this next week to see them put out a post that God has made the provision that God has provided and help them to raise that budget while they were quarantined because of coronavirus and get better and be able to get back over there and get to do ministry. So please be in prayer about that. That's all I've got with that. If you want to stand with me, turn to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14. I got one verse of scripture. I'm going to read it. And then I'll let y'all be seated, or we're going to pray. I'll let y'all be seated, and then I'm going to preach. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14. I'm going to be reading from the King James Version this morning. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14. Now thanks be unto God, which always causeth us to triumph in Christ, and maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every Place. I want to speak to you this morning on the subject, always triumphant. Would you play, pray with me, Father? Thank you so much for today. Thank you for this opportunity that we have to be in your house. Thank you for this second group, Lord, the second group of people that I've been able to be in this building with this morning to come in and to worship and to hear the Word of God. Father, I thank you for what you're going to do. I pray that you'd open the hearts, the minds, of the spirits of everyone in this room, of everyone watching by Facebook, everyone watching later by YouTube, listening by podcasts. I pray that you would open their hearts, their minds, and spirits. Let them receive what you have for them. And I ask for your anointing today, that you'd anoint me from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. Give me the clarity of thought and speech that is so absolutely necessary to do what you have called me to do. Now, Father, I thank you in advance for what you're going to do in Jesus mighty name and everybody in the house said amen God bless you you can be seated here this morning once again let me say how good it is to see you in the house of the Lord this morning in our first service as I got to about this point in the service, uh, I didn't feel I can see the light coming in uh, from behind me. It was dark. I heard the thunder rumble, and I was like, Lord, don't let it get too bad, and don't let the next group not come out. So I'm glad that you came out, and I'm happy the sun's shining. Thank the Lord for the sunshine. Thank the Lord for the rain, and thank God that you are here. Look at somebody and say, thank God you're here. <laughs> Amen. We find here... The Apostle Paul, in writing to churches, would sometimes set them straight on doctrine. As most of you know, the Apostle Paul was used by the Holy Spirit to write about two-thirds of the New Testament book-wise. And as he wrote, he was writing these letters to particular churches, these pastoral letters. He was the great missionary, the great pastor of pastors and churches. And he would write to these churches. And sometimes he would set them straight on doctrine. You know, especially to the church there in Corinth. We know as Pentecostal folks, you know, we like the Holy Ghost to move. And we like the freedom that comes with the Holy Ghost moving. But we also find that I mean, the church at Corinth, they had just done got buck wild out of control. And Paul in the book of Corinthians has to stop for a little while and talk to them and say, look, you got to, let's get some things in order. Let all things be done decently and in order. And so, so he had to set them straight there. Other times, other doctrines, he'd have to set them straight on. Occasionally, he would rebuke them for condoning evil. He would write to churches and he would say, listen, you're letting this go on. You're letting adultery go on. You're, you're, not, you're not addressing sin. You're letting it go on. And he'd say, you've got to, you've got to get yourself together here. But however, this verse was not one of those correcting verses, but it was one of those encouraging verses verses. Aren't you glad that though the Lord does correct us, though the Lord does set us straight, thank the Lord that, the, that He does encourage us as well. Somebody say amen. I don't know what happened between services, folks, but I've got the stutters in between the 9 and 11 in the front row over here is laughing about it, so just pray for the preacher this morning. I've got a few quick points for you more than normal, but they're shorter than normal, so don't panic. I'll get you out of here in plenty of time. I had three minutes and 30 seconds left on my timer back there when I got done. 
done in the first service. The first point I want to give you this morning, if you're taking notes, is that the Christian life is one of conflict. In fact, in our text here, as we look at this, the word triumph suggests a battle. Now, I'm going to be careful here because I don't want to get anybody too mad at me. But here's the deal. In order to triumph, you have to have a fight. You know, we live in a world today where there are so many. We want to hand out participation trophies, and nobody really knows the value of a fight anymore. Now, I'm not talking about fighting with people. I'm talking about you've got to go through conflict sometimes. You never really know what victory is until you've had to fight a battle. You see, I think it's unrealistic when we teach our children that you're never going to have to fight. It's unrealistic, I think, especially here recently. It's Jamie and I have been trying to talk to our girls and tell them about, look, life is just not fair. Life is not always going to be fair to you. In fact, there's many times that it's not going to be fair. And there's many times in life that you're going to have to fight. You're going to have to struggle, and you're going to have to scrap. You see, I'm going to tell you, there is conflict from conversion to death. I know that this isn't going to sell books and get me on TBN, but here's the bottom line of it. Folks, from the first time, when you first confess Jesus is Lord and give your heart to Him, from that moment on, the devil has got you in his crosshairs. I know sometimes the battle will be more intense than other times, but from that moment on, from the time of conversion, Version until the time of death or rapture, whichever one takes place first. And I don't know about y'all, but I'm believing that a lot of us here in this room, we're not going to see death. We're going to see rapture. But when whichever one of those comes first, there is going to be conflict. The enemy is going to come at you to try to steal, to try to kill and destroy. And it's not really about you. It's about getting at your heavenly Father because He hates you and me because the Lord Lord loves us. There's conflict. Paul fought, we find, with a beast in Ephesus. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 32. If after the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, what advantageth it me if the dead rise not? Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Now, we find that Paul says that he has fought with beasts at Ephesus. Now, we take just a moment and we think about this. It was not unrealistic to think about the fact that maybe Paul actually did wrestle with actual beasts. Because at this time, you know, part of it's still standing. How many of you have ever been over to Rome and you've seen the Colosseum before? Or maybe you've at least seen it on the internet or on TV on a picture. You see, because it's not unrealistic to think about the fact that at that time, they did have the Colosseum. That at that time, Rome truly did throw people and then wild animals in there with them to see which one would survive. However, we know according to history that, that Paul at this time had not actually fought with wild beasts because Paul at this time was a citizen of Rome and the citizens of Rome were not made to do that. So when Paul is talking about fighting a, with beasts in Ephesus, he wasn't actually talking about a lion or a tiger or a bear. There we go. We had Somebody was in the first service already. Oh, my. It wasn't that he had actually been fighting with those animals. He had been fighting. There had been riots, and there had been those that were in such opposition to the gospel of Jesus Christ being preached that it was like wild beasts that he was having to deal with. We find also in the Scripture wrestling against powers. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. I've got to once again be careful because I'm not here this morning to argue a particular thing, but I'm just going to stick my toe in it a little bit and then let y'all just run with it however y'all want to run with it. I need to remind us that we are living in a world where there are still spiritual warfare going on around us. I remind you that there are still demons out there, that there are still evil spirits. We're told in the scripture that there are spirits of infirmity. There is spirits of 
heaviness. We know that the devil is out there trying to kill, steal, and destroy. And there is a spiritual aspect still to this world that we are living in. Why do you think that the lady doctor just a few weeks back, people got to attacking her? And I don't necessarily agree with every bit of her doctrine, but she got to talking about demon spirits and different things. And all of a sudden, a lot of people just flipped out like, oh, she's crazy, she's nuts, and all that. You know why? Because the church don't even really believe in the spiritual warfare that is going on anymore. Now listen, I'm not up here again trying to, to, trying to tell you that some medicine is good or some medicine is not. I am not a doctor. I don't even play one on TV, and I didn't stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night. But what I am trying to tell you is this, that there is still spiritual warfare going on in the world right here, and it's not just in Haiti, and it's not just in Africa. Right here in Bethalto, Illinois, there are spirits of wickedness and darkness that are trying to destroy the church. There's a fight going on. We're told to fight the good fight in 1 Timothy 6 and 12. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Whereunto thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. 2 Timothy 4 and 7 says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Now, some of you may say, well, that's the apostle Paul. He was just talking about himself. You know, he was an apostle. He wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. That was just for him. But no, because in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 and 4, we find that all of us, when we get saved, enlist to fight in this spiritual warfare. Verse 3 says, therefore, endure hardness as a good soldier. And then in verse 4, please him who has chosen him to be a good soldier. Now, I know the kids are right now in kids' church right now, but I, I don't know about y'all, but when I grew up in Sunday school, and we didn't really have children's church during church, I had to sit through church. I didn't even get to get up under the pew. I can remember my mom and daddy, but other kids would get to at least get up under the pew. They'd like, sit right there, sit in the chair. You ain't getting up under the pew. Sit there and pay attention. I, but I, but listen, I'm, I'm dealing with, I'm, I'm counseling myself right now. Just hold on with me. Anyway, I don't know about y'all, but I did go to Sunday school and I did go to VBS and we sang this little song I'm in the Lord's army Yes, sir. I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. I may never march in the infantry, ride over the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never fly or the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. You see, recently, over these last few years, the church has not been an army. We've become a little country club. We've become a little social gathering, but God is calling the church back to where he wants us to be. We are not a country club. We are not a social gathering. We are an army. You want to read the history of the church of God? Dr. Charles Cohen wrote it and he named it the like a mighty army. You see, we are a mighty army. We are not just a social gathering. We are the army of Christ here in the world today. Come on, give him praise if you believe it. I got to keep moving. Secondly, it is also a triumphant life. Now that first part, I know that first point kind of got you down, got you into this, hey, we got to fight, we got to fight. But listen, here's the good news. It is a life of conflict, but it's also a triumphant one. You see, it is not a defeatist life because Scripture tells us in our text, causeth us to triumph. Everybody say triumph. I need you to know that you don't have to walk around like you've been baptized in vinegar and you lost your best friend. It's a sad state of affairs when Christian people look like they're the most miserable people walking around on this planet. They look like, whoa, it's me. You know, that's why we quit having testimony services because it went from giving God glory to giving the people to rather expound and give glory to the devil about their problems than talk about the God that delivered them from their problems. You see, we have been given a triumphant life. Romans 8 37 tells us we are more than 
conquerors. You see, Christ gives us the power. In Luke chapter 10 and verse 19, he says, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. And then in Acts 1 and 8, Jesus said, But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Christ has given you power. You are not on your own in this thing. You have his power. And defeat should not be in the Christian's vocabulary. First John 4 and 4 says, Ye are of God. Listen to this. Little children and have overcome them. Why? Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world. I love that. I love that because we quote the last part of that all the time but leave off the first part and you know what? The first part makes it even better. Why is that? Because he says you are of God little children. He doesn't, he's not talking to some mighty warrior. He's not talking to somebody that seems to have it all together. No, he's talking to little children. And he says, you've overcome them, not because you're big, not because you're powerful. No, but because greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world. Second Corinthians 9 and 8, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you. That ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. You see, we have the victory in Jesus. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 57, but thanks be to God which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's why we've been singing in the church for years. Oh, victory in Jesus my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. You see, I still believe in 2020 even in the midst of a pandemic, even in the midst of a world that is tearing itself apart that we, the church, have victory in Jesus. Give God praise if you believe it. If you're taking notes, number three, our victory is not sporadic, but it is continuous. You see there in our text, it uses the word always. Everybody say always. Always causeth us to triumph. Not up one day and down the other. God, now listen, I know sometimes the fight's going to be hotter. It's going to be more intense some days than others. But can I tell you, He always causes you to triumph. You may feel defeated, but you are not defeated. You may feel like the devil's got the best of you, but he has not because Jesus defeated him over 2,000 years ago on the cross of Calvary. He made a show of him openly the Bible said so that there'd be no debating in the spiritual realm about who won you have been given the victory because Jesus has already won it not up one day down the other Psalm 46 verse 1 says this God is our refuge and strength a very present help in trouble. Now, y'all know me by now. Maybe you do. Maybe you don't. But let me tell you about me. I was raised old school. Y'all y'all heard me. Most of my songs, I like that Graves in the Garden, but they kept saying they're going to sing some Graves in the Garden. I'm like, I don't even know that song. It was good. Furtick wrote it, I think, is who wrote it and all that. I'm good with it. I know. I'm not one of those folks that are stuck in the past, but I enjoy the past. I'm thankful to pastor a church with over 90 years of heritage and 90 years of victories that have gone on here. I'm thankful for the past. You know what? I'm also thankful for the future. As long as the Lord tarries, I believe God's got a revival. 
revival coming. I believe we're going to see people saved. I believe God's not done with the church yet. I believe, listen, I believe God's got great things. But folks, can I stop for just a minute and tell you this? that there have been times even in the last two weeks where I really didn't care about what happened in the past. I didn't care about what God had brought me through in the past. And I really didn't even care about what God was going to do in the future. Why is that? Because right where I was at in the present, I needed God to show up. And I'm thankful that He's not only the God of the past, and He's not only the God of the future, but He is my very present help in the time of trouble. Because when I'm in trouble, I need Him to show up in my my right now present and deliver me from what I'm going through. Give him praise if you know what I'm talking about. Moffat's comment on the text is this. Makes my life, I love this, a constant pageant of triumph. Ooh. In other words, now, obviously, I'm not good looking enough to be in any pageants. But I've been around them enough. And I know just a little bit about pageants. And I think about this. And when I, when I, I see when Moffat said this, makes my life a constant pageant of triumph. I think about it this way. I think about every time the devil tries to destroy me. I feel like that I'm just walking on the catwalk. And the devil's out in the crowd. And all he can do is look up at me and see triumph. Triumph that Jesus Christ. Every time the devil tries to destroy me, I just strut my stuff up on the catwalk. And he's mad. He's madder than a hornet. But he can't do anything about it. Because somebody bigger than him and greater than him has already won the victory for me. And I'm just choosing to walk in what he's done for me. There's continuous, ever-abiding victory. Number four, our battles are not won by our own strength. That's a key phrase there, God causeth. Somebody say, God causeth. God causeth us to triumph. You see, we're no match for our foes. You know, sometimes we like to think a lot of ourselves... You know, I, I'm trying. I'm trying. I've listen. Since I got here, I've gotten fat. I'm not talking about P H A T. I'm talking about F A T. We were. We've been some of this time that we've had. We've been just cleaning out a bunch of junk, and we found some old pictures of right before we moved here. We went on a cruise. You know what Jamie said? Wow, you were in shape. So I've been trying to get back in the gym here recently. I've been trying. You know, and you know, it feels good. Even Jaden, she's like, you know what? I just feel like your arms, they just kind of gotten straight. <laughs> That's all right. Come on, get a good laugh at my expense. I'm giving it to you. Your arms have gotten straight, but I came in from the gym the other day. She said, you know, I can see muscles again. So it makes me feel like you can defend us if you need to. I wanted to say, listen, I may have got flabby, but my trigger finger still works. You're going to be safe, honey. <laughs> I wasn't that weak. But here's the deal. You know, there's sometimes, there's been times in my life where I've really felt where I have been in shape. And I've felt good. And I've been strong. And I have squatted and benched and way more than I can right now. And really thought a lot of myself. But you know what? Here's the deal. I'm no match for the enemy. Not only in physical strength, there's times where, I'll tell you this, this whole mess has brought me to my knees in prayer. If there's anything good that's happened out of all this mess, it's been I've been praying more. I have been praying more than I have in a long time. And listen, here's the deal. I still, in myself, and no match for the devil. 
I'd like to think I am. I'd like to think I could just take him and choke slam him anytime I want, but I cannot. But our captain conquers them for us. Hebrews 2 and 10 says this, For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. Folks, I'm no match for the devil, but the captain of my salvation has already made him his footstool. He's already kicked his feet up on the devil. He's already kicked his feet up. He went down and took the keys to death, hell, and the grave, and I may not be able to take the devil on, but the captain of my salvation is more than able to take care of him. Give God praise if you believe it. I got to keep moving, fifthly, if you're taking notes. There is a place of safety. We triumph in Christ. Everybody say, in Christ. You see, the battle rages. Trials are everywhere. You see, we sometimes feel overwhelmed because of what we're going through. I mentioned a few weeks back, I preached somewhere, I can't even remember. But I talked about the disciples had to go through the storm. They were in the boat, and the winds were howling, and the lightning was flashing, and the thunder was crashing. They had to go through the storm. But Jesus was in the boat with them. Psalm 23, we say it a lot at funerals. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. We have to go through some stuff. We have to go through the storm. We have to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. If I stood up here and just told you, hey, just accept Jesus, you'll never have to go through nothing again, I'd be lying through my teeth and I couldn't put my head on my pillow at night. No, and I didn't tell you. But listen, you've got to go through some things. And we feel like that we're just, everything around us is going bad. But here's the deal. We overcome because of our position. Colossians 3 and 3 tells us this. For ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. I'm thankful that though the storms are raging around me, though this world is going crazy, there's a pandemic happening, there's riots happening, even in the middle of all of that, I am hid with Christ in God. In fact, the devil himself admits in Job 1 and 10, has not thou made a hedge about him and about his house and about all All that he hath on every side. Thou hast blessed the work of his hands. And his substance is increased in the land. Folks, I'm telling you, I am thankful today that there is a God in heaven that may make me have to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I may have to go through the storm. But I'm thankful that I'm hid with Christ in God. I'm thankful that even though there's danger and chaos around me, that God has put his hedge about myself and about my family. We find also in Song of Solomon chapter 4 and verse 12, you are a garden locked up, my sister, my bride. You are a spring enclosed, a sealed fountain. You see, Scripture tells us that the church is the bride of Christ. Song of Solomon is a love story. And we can compare and use the parallel here of the bride to us as the bride of Christ. And he says, you're a garden locked up, my sister, my bride. You're a spring enclosed, a sealed fountain. Here's what I believe. I believe in the midst of all the chaos that's happening around us that the church, that the church is still 
a bride, a spring enclosed, and a sealed fountain. Folks, I still believe that out of all the chaos happening around us, that there are people that are lost and dying and going to hell, and they can still find that the church is a place of refuge, that the church is a place of refreshing, that God has not given up on His church. I can't help myself. I don't believe God's done with the church. Folks, I know, listen, I'm not criticizing anybody watching. I know that there are people that, that this thing affects differently with conditions and especially being older. But folks, I'm telling you, uh, Jesus said upon this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. If the gates of hell are not going to prevail, then I'm telling you the coronavirus is not going to put an end to the gathered church. I believe that we are still a place where this world can come and find refreshing. I believe God has called us to that. Six, the reason is this. It is to manifest Christ. Look at the end of the verse. And maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. You see, the reason we walk and we're... We are allowed to go through the things that we're allowed to go through. It's not to show our own strength or our own power, but it's so the people around us can see that there's something different about us. Folks, when people look at, at church, at church people, Bethalto Church of God specifically, because I'm your pastor and I pray for every, every church, but specifically I'm your pastor. And so here's the deal. I pray that when people look at us, that we are letting the world see the beauty of Jesus through us. That they look at us and they see something different than everybody else. When they see the rest of the world tearing themselves apart, hating each other, that they look and they say, wait, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Something's different about those folks. They've got joy. They've got peace. They've got love. Mm. Finally, number seven. Thanks are due for his help. It starts out, that verse starts out, now thanks be unto God. You see, he is the difference between defeat and victory. Jesus is the difference. You know, you've, most of you, you've watched some sort of movie before. And you've watched, especially a sports movie, where maybe the quarterback got hurt, went out of the game, and they play and they're getting toward the end and they think he's never going to come back. And then all of a sudden he walks out of the locker room and walks onto the field and leads them to the winning touchdown. I can remember specifically instances like this. I mentioned in the first service, I can remember several years back, the National College Football National Championship, Alabama and Texas, Colt McCoy. It's supposed to be this big showdown between these two Equal teams, Colt McCoy, their starting quarterback, got hurt, and Alabama demolished them. Less significant than that was the Egg Bowl a few years back, Mississippi State and Ole Miss. We should have we should have creamed them. We were playing them in Starkville, and one of those Ole Miss players went low on Fitzgerald, our quarterback, and gruesome injury broke it. You, it showed it on TV. It was a gruesome injury. Ole Miss took over, took the lead. Backup quarterback had not taken many reps because there was no plan for him. We lost that one. And I, I, I hate sometimes to, to cause, because it's so much more significant, but even the Apostle Paul uses sports imagery, races and different things, and so it helps us to understand, listen, your life is a loss until Jesus walks in. You can be losing badly. But when Jesus Christ walks into your life, suddenly the victory is gain. Jesus is the victor who can bring you the victory. He is the difference between defeat and victory. Stand with me, please, all over the building, if you will. 
I want to do two things before we let you out of here. It's not even 12 o'clock yet. I've got two things I'd like to do. First thing I'd like to do is this. I want to give an invitation. Maybe there's some watching or maybe even somebody in the building today. You don't have the Lord in your life. And you this and you felt throughout this preaching maybe somebody out there you you've been scrolling through facebook and some random friend of yours that you don't even remember how you became friends with has shared this service and you for some random reason started watching this and you feel like i need i need something in my life i need that victory folks i'm glad to tell you god wants everybody He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So I want to tell you that if you feel like your life, you're living your life in defeat, that there's somebody that can turn it around. And that's not Buddha, and that's not Allah. It's Jesus. Jesus Christ can turn your life around. With every head bowed and every eye closed, saints, I need you praying with me right now that somebody, somebody would receive the Lord today. And I want to ask those of you in the building with me to just pray this out loud with me. And Maybe you're out there and you're watching this and you need the Lord. Or maybe you're in this building and you need the Lord. I want you to just pray this with me. Let's pray this out loud. Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you right now. And I'm in need of a Savior. I don't want to live in defeat. But I want to live in victory. I admit that I'm a sinner. I'm unable to save myself. I confess that Jesus is Lord. I ask you, Jesus, to be Lord of my life, to forgive me of my sins. Wash me in your blood. Fill me with your spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Folks, I'm telling you, if you prayed that prayer this morning and you meant it, you are ready for heaven. You have the Lord in your life and He will make you victorious. Somebody give God praise this morning. Now before I go, I've got one other thing. And that's this. You know, even some of us that have been in church a long time, Sometimes we feel overwhelmed by the stuff that's going on around us. We really do. I'm going to tell you, I've been overwhelmed with the amount of people that have just been sick and struggling with this virus. Now, i got to stop and say thanks be to God. I'm thankful for so many that God has already healed. And I believe God's going to continue to do that. But I know sometimes life just gets overwhelming, even when you know the Lord, even when you're saved. We just need a reminder sometimes that it's Him, Jesus, that gives us the victory. And it's already been paid for for you. Ain't no better feeling than walking up somewhere to pick something up. And they took this, that's already been paid for. <laughs> Folks, I'm telling you that your victory, it's already been paid for. All you got to do is just receive it and the Lord will get it. I'm not telling you, you don't have to walk. You're going to have to walk through some valleys of the shadow of death sometimes. You're going to have to live through some storms sometimes. But you're hidden with Christ in God. He is with you. I will fear no evil for thou art with me. He's going to help you get through. If you're here. You say, Pastor, yeah, I know the Lord, but I just, I need him to help me. I need the victory of my life. Come on, just put your hand up. Say, I need the victory. I need the victory. Come on, put every hand in this building up right now. Let's just pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray you've already won the victory. You've already done it. Now, some of us are having to walk through some stuff we'd rather not walk through. But, Lord, that's all part of it. We've been called. It's a life of conflict. It's a life of battle. Spiritual warfare is going on everywhere. But, Lord, you've 
won the victory. You've won the victory already, Lord Jesus. And so I pray we'd walk in it. I pray we'd act like it, oh God. Help us to receive that victory by faith, to know that no matter what's going on in our life, no matter how tough it may seem, that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And if God be for us, then who can be against us? Lord, you have called us to a life of triumph, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Now let us walk in it. Let us walk in it, oh God. Let us walk in it, I pray, in the name of Jesus Christ. Don't let us walk around with our bottom lip dragging the ground like we're defeated but let us walk in the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, give God praise this morning if you believe that he's won the victory. Yes, come on, let's praise him before we go. Thanks be to God. media page. Um, we'll have information out about that. On Tuesday, our kids will be meeting via Zoom, so if you need more information about how to get that link, um, we do keep that private for our kids, so be sure to message our Facebook page or contact the office and we'll get that to you. Um, then on Wednesday night, we're going to have service here in the sanctuary. Thursday night, we'll have youth Zoom, so be sure, all these times will be at 6.30, so be sure to be looking for those online. Um, be sure on your way out that you don't forget to give um, your offerings. You can either do that in the barrel out there. Um, we have the kiosk or you can text, go online, whatever works best for you. And um, please be sure to social distance, wear your mask on your way out, and just try not to visit as best as you can. I know it's hard because we all love to see one another. But at this time, Miss um, Aniston is coming to do our Lord's Prayer, and we'll get ready to go. kingdom come, we will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And this not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, power, glory forever. Amen.
Amen. Have a great Sunday afternoon.